Welcome to the Thriving Tides Podcast. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Julianne. If you're an entrepreneur or busy individual looking for self-care ideas, you're in the right place. And we can't wait to share our experiences with you. Yes. Sweet. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Thriving Tides. We have a really exciting episode today. We're doing something a little bit different than we usually do. We have a expert in the studio and her name is Stephanie Smith with My Enneagram Life. She is a mindset coach who helps young adults build confidence uh, and self-worth using the Enneagram. And I know I don't know too much about it so I'm Mm -hmm. really excited to learn a little bit more. And she's also in Colorado so she you are actually our first person off Canada. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. We're going like super far. (laughs) International. We're international now. I love it. (laughs) Go big or go home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Watch out, world. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. Welcome to the, well, we're not in the closet today, but welcome to the studio, Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you so much, ladies. I'm so excited to um, talk to you guys about the Enneagram, talk to you about self development, how to use the Enneagram as a tool, um, as an entrepreneur and a growing person. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Like Steph said, I am in Colorado. I am a mindset and Enneagram coach. And I actually got into the Enneagram about three years ago. And a friend just gave it to me. They said, take this test. And I was forever in so into like personality tests. So if you've never heard of the Enneagram, it's a personality test. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about it is that it doesn't just put you in a box. It helps you, you know, grow and it describes where you are in life. So it's, that's kind of what sets it apart from other types uh, of you know, personality tests. So I fell in love with it right when I heard about it because it almost gave me the words that I wasn't able to describe about myself. Um, and it put things into perspective almost. Mm. And so it was a very helpful tool for me as a three, which I'll tell you about, um, who is sometimes detached from their emotions because they're so into um, their goals. <laughs> I feel seen. <laughs> For our listeners, I just gave yeah. Julianne a stare because she is a fellow three as well. So I am. Yeah. yeah. Um, so- and I'm just going to jump in for a second, Stephanie, too, and let our listeners and viewers know. So Um, If you listen to our guest episodes on the regular, which we hope you do, um, we usually do more of an interview style. We have a lot of questions. We get really curious with our guests when they come, but we've invited Stephanie Smith here as the expert tonight. And it's going to be more of her really sharing what is the Enneagram, what are the different types and lots of details. So we'll still pop in with our curious questions, of course, because we can't hold back, Uh, but it's going to be a little different today. And we're kind of excited about that too. Yeah. Yeah, good. Sorry, I just went That's for okay. it. No, you're oh, we're, we're, no. you're a we three. Love this. <laughs> yeah, this is like it's totally my personality type. So love it. Love it. Teach us. Um, <laughs> yes. So yeah, if you have never heard of the Enneagram beforehand, um, it's just an awesome tool for self development. That doesn't put you in a box. Like I said before, it'll tell you like how to grow, what you look like when you're stressed, and kind of the background of the Enneagram. It is a combination of a ton of ancient wisdom traditions. So everything that is within the Enneagram is, has been studied and used for centuries. Mm-hmm. And then back in the sixties is when they actually put it together as a test and kind of, um, refined it. So it's easy to understand. So it's not new, even though it's kind of a new fad, but every, everyone I think is just more aware of themselves and self-development during this time, um, in the uh, kind of recent years. So everyone's like crazy about the Enneagram now. Mm-hmm. So I am crazy about the Enneagram. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, it's, Oh, oh sorry. Well, do you find that like some people, cause this was my biggest thing was that how can we be divided up into nine types Mm. right because like even my husband he looked at it and he's like oh how can you be into nine types and even back to our astrology episode Mm. people were like how can I be in this one specific 
person Dogs, almost yeah. yeah yeah so the reason why so after studying this for like centuries they found out that everybody it comes down to like nine core desires in life you might look different because you're going to have different personalities you're going to have different traits but there are nine desires and nine core fears and that's how it breaks up into each enneagram type Um, so it all comes down to why you do what you do instead of what do you do? Because you might look at other personality tests and it says, okay, this is what you look like. This is what you do. And you say, okay, I know that I do that, but why do I do that? You know, like, how do I change that? So the Enneagram is helpful because it, it doesn't just put you in a box. Like you were saying it, it shows you where you can grow and within the nine types. There are so many subtypes. Um, we'll kind of get into the wings. You have a wing on either <laughs> side. So with wings alone, I mean, it already expands it. Um, so, and then you break it down to subtypes and tri types. And they say there's nine types, but everyone's different. Everyone's unique. And that mm. is the cool thing about the Enneagram. Exactly. Well, and it's funny because that's actually I was on Instagram Reels, which, by the way, for our listeners, if you're on Reels, you really need to be on Reels because this is actually how uh, I found you, Stephanie. Like I was looking at your Reels and it was the one that you did of like the nine and sixes. And it was like uh, things you sit down to complete one task, but you didn't complete any tasks because it's too overwhelming. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I feel so called out and seen. I'm so embarrassed. I need to talk to her. (laughs) Hey, that's a healthy spot to be in for you to be like, okay, Ooh, that's bad about me. I want to talk to her. (laughs) So yeah. Power of Instagram that like Mm -hmm. you're doing those kinds of reels. And it's so true that it, because it was the nine and sixes, it was part of my personality type, I guess. Yeah. And that's another cool thing about the Enneagram. You sometimes feel alone when you're doing these things and then you read about the Enneagram and then you're like, wow, somebody else thinks this way, or I've never said that out loud. How does it know this about me when you truly find your type? And sometimes you do feel called out. Um, but it's almost like a good calling out because you're like, okay, I'm not alone. Like, I don't feel so bad because there are other people like me out there, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, I laughed. I was like, this is great. I even showed my husband and he laughed. He's like, yeah, that's so you. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, funny. so Julie is a three and then Steph is a nine. Um, so we are all, actually all in line with each other. Mm. So if you're looking at the Enneagram symbol, the nine is at the top of this circle and then one through eight follows going um, clockwise. And then you have different lines within the circle. It's kind of hard to describe (laughs) out of words. Um, But after this episode, go look at what the symbol looks like because you're going to see your lines. And Mm -hmm. I'll put a grid up in the video too for us. Perfect. Yes. (laughs) Um, So I guess everyone go watch the YouTube video. (laughs) (laughs) And the episode. Listen to the episode too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But you're in line with, we're all in line with each other. So we're going to take on different characteristics from each type, which is kind of cool. So you guys probably work really well together because you're pulling from each other's strengths and weaknesses and kind of evening each other out. Mm -hmm. Um, So the Enneagram is helpful when it comes to communicating with people, um, working in business with people in relationships, and then also self-development. So are you guys ready for like an overview of each type? Bring it on. Oh, I'm so excited. (laughs) I feel like I'm in like a course I need. Oh, I didn't bring my notepad. <laughs> oh well, my god! The great thing is that you're going to get to edit this later. So you can. Oh yeah. I, I watch it and listen to it like seven times. Yeah. So I'll get my. Yeah. All right. right. We can be just fully present with you. Yeah, this is great. exactly. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So I hope I gave you enough background about what the Enneagram is. Um, but we're going to go through each type. The type number one is called the reformer and they are very purposeful. They're self-controlled. Um, they're very principled and organized. They like things to be done their way, um, and have an order. They're someone that wants it done correctly. 
and they don't want to cut any corners. They have very high standards and they want everyone around them to live up to those high standards they have as well. Um, their core fear in life is to be corrupt or evil. And that's why they're kind of trying to control their surroundings because they don't want anything to be defective. Um, so I should have mentioned before the reason why we do things in our life all comes back down to our core motivation and our core fear. So it's easy to understand why someone's doing something. If you know their Enneagram type and you know, their core fear and their core desire. So you can kind of understand them a little bit better and communicate. And it also gives you a little bit more empathy Mm -hmm. and compassion for somebody because you're like, okay, I understand why you're doing that. It might not be the way I want it done, but I understand why you're doing it, you know? Okay. Um, And the core motivation of a one is to be good and to have integrity and to be balanced. So like I said, they're controlling their environment um, so that everything's flowing together with a purpose. Um, And ones are the people that want to make a difference in the world and make a difference for good, Mm. you know? The type two is called the helper and they are very encouraging. They are your helpers. They care for people. They have a servant's heart. Um, They're very generous and appreciative and giving, you know, these are your people that will bring a casserole to your house if you're sick. (laughs) And these are your nurses and your teachers Um, their core desire in life is to be loved and their core fear is to be unwanted and unworthy of being loved. Mm -hmm. So coming back to why they do what they do, they're serving people and they're doing things for other people because deep down, they ultimately feel that if they're not serving others, they're not going to be loved. They're, they're almost earning the love of others. So that's something to be aware of as a two. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to think if I know of any twos. Oh, I know so <laughs> many twos. My best friend's a two. For yeah. Certain. Yeah. 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 This is interesting. Oh, I should have mentioned that before. Like when you're listening to these types, be thinking of the people in your life that that mm. kind of sounds like. At the same time, don't stereotype people. And I'll, and I'll touch on that. At the end. You're such a five. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, The Enneagram three is the achiever. So that's me and Julie. And our basic desire in life is to feel valuable and worthwhile. And a few characteristics of a three is that they're very excelling. They're goal oriented. They're adaptable. um, They're leaders. um, They're very driven and focused. And a lot of times they are business owners or entrepreneurs or someone in a leadership position because they don't mind taking control of the situation. Mm. Their basic fear is to be worthless. <laughs> Does that sound like you, Julie? Mm. Is that me? No. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's like, I'm so like, do you. you follow me around? Do yeah. you really know me? <laughs> <laughs> I know when you, yeah. when you hear someone talk about yeah. your type, you're like, Oh my gosh, can you like get out of my head? Right. <laughs> like where are the hidden cameras? Yeah. I don't see them. Yes. <laughs> So their basic, the reason why they're doing what they're doing and excelling so much and achieving is because deep down the threes feel like if they don't look successful, they won't be valuable Mm -hmm. and their core fear is to be worthless. So they're working hard to have all these achievements and these goals and these medals so that they seem worthwhile. That sounds like all your courses as that I, you take. As I look over at my metal <laughs> rack on the wall here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Great. At the end, I actually want to th- ask you girls um, what you guys thought when you first heard your type. Because mm-hmm. when I first heard my type, I actually, as a three, sometimes we can be called vain, which is horrible. But I read the bad things about my number and I was like, oh, yeah, that's not that bad. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clearly I needed some work, but yeah. I want to like hear what the threes guys. are the people who go and in a job interview, they're like, what's a weakness you have? And it's like, I work too hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I could see that. That's funny. Yes, exactly. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and then the four is called the individualist and they are very creative. They are expressive. They are very self-aware and introspective. Um, oftentimes they have like fantasies um, and just create this dream picture of their life. And um, they're very compassionate. A lot of times these people are your artists or your musicians, anybody that's showing their emotions through art mm-hmm. of some sort. You know, they're very creative. Their basic desire in life is to find significance. So that's why they're so introspective because they're searching for who they are. They're searching for significance in this world and they're expressing their emotions through creativity, through art. Um, and they just love to find beauty in everything. You know, something that we say about four force is that they find the beauty out of the ashes. Um, and you know, it sounds good, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like yeah. I yes. yeah. <laughs> um, their basic fear is to have no identity, no identity and no personal significance. Mm-hmm. So they, um, yeah, are, are the reason why they're so introspective is because they're looking for that just kind of explains a little bit why they do what they do. Yeah. Um, and then the Enneagram five is the investigator. These people are very facts driven. They are insightful. They're innovative. A lot of times they like, um, numbers kind of, they like science things that I do not like, (laughs) um, they're visionaries and they're very innovative. So an example of a five is like Bill Gates or Elon Musk, like making technology, Mm. things like that. These are your fives. (laughs) Mm. Um, they are excited by knowledge and their basic desire in life is to be capable and competent. So the reason why they're so um, involved and excited by knowledge and just learning more things is because they want to be capable in every situation that they're in. Mm. So their basic fear is being incapable. So they're going to read up on every single thing that they can that interests them, I should say. So they are completely capable in that subject, you know, um, the mastery. And then the, <laughs> yes, mastery. Yeah. yeah mm. That's exactly that's a great yeah. way to put a five. Mm. Yeah. They master like skills that a lot of people don't have, which is really cool. Yeah. They must be patient too, or just like because to get to that level of excellence or mastery, like that doesn't happen overnight, right? Oh no, not at all. They're very patient. Um I could go into the orientations to time. Um, but it's a little bit more confusing, (laughs) but an Enneagram five is in the past orientation to time. So they're making their decisions and, um, walking through life based on their past. So they're in no Mm. hurry to, you know, move on to the next thing. They really want to master what they're doing. So yeah, like you said, they have a lot of patience. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The Enneagram six is called our loyalist and they are very loyal. They're responsible, they're hardworking, um, they're very engaging, and they're committed. They're also people, people. No, <laughs> um, I don't know how they are that. people. people, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like they're people yeah. oriented. That's a better yeah. way to say it. <laughs> they're people, people. I like the people, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, they're very committed and, uh, Sometimes it can be hard to gain the trust of a six, but once you have it, they are loyal forever. And a lot of times they, do you guys know a six? Are you a you six guys are looking or are you at a nine? Other? Well, then my nine and my six on my diagram are like really close. So I'm just like, I could mm. be either or, and I'm just like, I feel more of a nine. Yeah. But what you just so said. Like, was yeah. I was just like. <laughs> Well, you're in line with six, (laughs) six and a a nine are in the same line. Yeah. So you might be having a hard time deciphering what type you are because you take on both those characteristics at times. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So the basic fear of a six is to be without support and guidance. 
and their basic desire is to have security and support. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes sixes will be in careers or put themselves in situations in their lives where they know exactly what's expected of them and they have security. You know, they're probably not going to be the one that's just going to jump out of the boat without any raft, you know? (laughs) Um, But oftentimes they put themselves in careers like, you know, government jobs or um, a police officer, something where they know what's expected of them and a very secure job. You know, their whole premise in life is to have security. That's kind of funny because like, so in our like astrology episode, I'm a Taurus and I'm a very heavy Taurus and it's all about security and stuff like that. So when you say that, like that is one of my biggest fears is not being secure. Mm -hmm. And there's times like uh, entrepreneurship because it is entrepreneurship Mm -hmm. uh, podcast. You have the ups and the downs with business. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm just like, okay, I have my CV ready. Like I can just, you know, send it to a bunch of different places, get a (laughs) full-time job and just stop with the worry. And then I'm like, wait, no, Steph, like you actually love what you do and you like Mm -hmm. being a boss, but at the same time, you're like, oh, I could just, you know, get the Mm. get the government job or whatever. And it's just like, is that secure though? And then you have to have that dialogue. So it's very interesting that you yeah, I feel called out again. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not calling you out I'm just saying the thing just sharing. <laughs> yes oh, awesome. I know when you listen to these things you're like "Ooh, wow that really sounds like me mm-hmm. and so uh, sh- I should mention like that is a good way to determine your type and um tests are good but ultimately you're going to be the one that's going to decide what Enneagram type you are And when something really resonates with you, like you said, the security aspect, the core desire is what really has to resonate with you. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can know what your Enneagram type is. Um, So for a six, their desire is to be, you know, secure. And for a nine, their desire is to have peace of mind. And we'll talk about that as a nine, um, but that is definitely one way that you can know what type you are because um, it really has to resonate with you deep down in your core desire, mm. you know? Yeah. Mm. So as a seven, or I'm not a seven, I shouldn't say as a seven, but the type seven is the enthusiast. And actually I sometimes mistype as a seven because you'll hear about it. (laughs) Um, They are spontaneous (laughs) and they're versatile. They're very joyous and multi-talented. They're very adventurous. I think a lot of people actually mistype as a seven because they think, oh, seven is really cool. Um, They're really fun. They love parties. They love camping. They're adventurous. So if I am adventurous, I must be a seven. Mm. No, (laughs) it's not that simple, (laughs) not that simple, but it can be easy, easily done. Um, Mm. so for seven, the reason why they are so adventurous, so, um, craving these different experiences and jumping from one thing to the next is because their basic desire in life is to be satisfied. Mm. So they're just looking for everything that will satisfy their craving. And their ba- their basic fear is to be deprived and in pain. So they're running from their pain to all the parties, to all the trips, to all the new business um, adventures kind of a thing. Mm. So um, that's our basic core fear and desire. <laughs> I can do. So as you're saying that, I'm thinking too, that I could easily mistype as a seven. Would that be a common thing for a three? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 100%. Okay. So I could go into stances as well, but an Enneagram three and an Enneagram seven are in the aggressive stance. Mm. So there's a lot of similarities within um, the seven and the three, but to really know if you're a seven or a three, you have to just look at the basic fear and the desire. Mm. Um do you really crave being worthwhile? Do you think people won't love you unless you perform or do you not really care about what people think and you just want 
everything to satisfy yourself? Mm, you know, those are the kind of okay. questions you can ask, man, but to know we were going this deep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Me and my journal are going to have a little date later. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It takes you deep, like right off the bat. Mm. <laughs> it's so much fun. If you like I self-awareness, like this is the thing for you. <laughs> so, cool. um, so yeah, that's the seven. And then the Enneagram eight is the challenger. And a lot of times I feel like people get the challenger a bad rap because um, they're pretty direct and they're self-confident and they just say what they're going to say. They don't really care what you're thinking. Um, they're just going to tell you straight how it is straight to the point. Um, at the same time, they're very powerful and they're a provider. Something that an Enneagram eight loves is justice. So everything in their life is going to kind of be paving a path for others um, because they're a protector and a provider you know, so their basic desire in life is to protect themselves and to be in control of their own life. A lot of times these people are entrepreneurs or business owners, people that can make the choices for themselves and, um, kind of control their own, you know, destiny almost. Mm -hmm. And their basic fear of the basic fear of an eight is to be harmed or be controlled by others. So the reason why they are so self-confident and powerful is because they're kind of masking their fear of being controlled by others. They're just going to overpower someone so they don't become overpowered. Mm, Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll I'll get you before you get me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You had some of those in mind stuff? Oh yeah. I know a couple people like that. Yeah. So the Enneagram nine is called the peacemaker. And these people are your listeners. They're easygoing. They are good natured. They're very patient, um, very supportive. If you need someone to just vent to go to a nine because they are just going to listen. And, um, they, they really, they're awesome friends. Um, and the reason why they are this way is because their basic desire in life is to have inner stability of like peace of mind. They don't like conflict. They're going to run from conflict. You're shaking your head. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because they think that if the, a conflict arises, there's going to be a loss and separation of that um, friendship or relationship or whatever it might be. And that's their basic fear loss and separation. Hmm. So that was a brief wow. overview. I guess I should ask Steph, what does, how does the nine sound now that you've heard that? Um, it's like, it's very, both of them are just so me. Hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I just, I don't know, but I don't know. What do you think? You know, me, we've hung out together every week <laughs> <laughs> for a while now. For a while yeah. now. I don't know. Like, I yeah, think I I'm could see both. Like, yeah. cause you, I mean, I definitely know the sense of security is very huge for you. Yeah. Um, and then meanwhile, like for the nine side, like you don't like that loss and separation, however, wrong her and you're out for good. yeah yeah I'm very like you yeah. so she doesn't like it but she'll cut it right off so there's I don't want to no be hurt again right da- yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that, is yeah that part mm-hmm. of the nine so yeah sure. I, don't I don't know, know. weird mm. I don't yeah know. that's very interesting you Feeling sound a little bit more like a six because a nine that I found at least you know would stay past uh, there. I mean, maybe it is, it is kind of a nine thing too. I don't know. I'm going to have to dig into this a little bit more with you. I'm going to ask you so many more questions. I'm a very complex individual, Stephanie, don't you know? (laughs) Yes. Yes. And that, that's the thing. Like we all are. And that's, what's great about the Enneagram because I think I've said this so many times already, it doesn't put you in a box because you know, it is, you can not, you can't be multiple types, but Hmm you can take on different characteristics Mm -hmm. and it doesn't just say, well, you're six and that's all you are. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You know? (laughs) Yeah. 
That's interesting. Yeah. Well, that, that was one of the questions that came in from Instagram too, was, can I be more than one type? Because I think similar to what we're, we're working through with Steph yeah. over here is you hear all these things and you're like, well, mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed. I don't really know which one fully resonates with me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can't be more than one type. You're going to be one core type. You might look different in different times of your life, but all the way from childhood through adulthood, you're going to be the same type. You're going to have that same desire either to be loved or to have peace or to have control, you know, all of those same desires from childhood all the way through adulthood. Mm -hmm. And that's how you make your decisions in life. That's what's driving you. That's why you're doing what you're doing. You're going to look different in different stages of your life. Um, you're going to take on different characteristics from your wings or different health levels. We have a thing in the Enneagram that's called integration and disintegration. So mm -hmm. these are our lines. So when you integrate into a different number, you're going to take on the healthy characteristics of the number that you're supposed to go to when you're growing, when you're self-aware, you're, when you're taking care of yourself. And then when you're unhealthy emotionally, you're going to take on the bad characteristics of another number. Mm -hmm. So you could be a three, I could be a three and be very unhealthy and look like a nine. And I would mistype myself as a nine because, you know, I'm taking on so many of their characteristics. So that's how you can sometimes, sometimes mistype yourself because there's so many different lines, so many different mm -hmm. health levels, but yeah, like I said before, throughout your entire life, you're going to stay the same core desire, but what could be happening is yeah, you're, you're mistyping yourself. You know, the Enneagram only as its characteristics. So it could be very easy to mistype yourself, you know, like as a seven, oh yeah, I'm fun. I'm mm -hmm. easygoing. I'm, I like parties. But deep down, your core desire is something different than just your characteristics. So in order to really find your type, you have to be really honest with yourself. You have to really look deep down like, okay, why am I doing this? Am I serving this person because I love them? Or am I serving this person because I want to feel loved? You know? So be honest. With <laughs> We're both like, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Oh no, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. very interesting. So like for those who don't, you take the test online, right? So there's quizzes online, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so would you say that like, you should go into those quizzes with like a mindset of like being open, like don't do it on a really bad day or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like when, yeah, you're that's the... a great question. How to take the test is a good question. Mm -hmm. So I guess a maybe broader way to state it is how to find your Enneagram type, uh, your core type. Um, you can take a test and a lot of people don't like tests. Um, like coaches and things, I don't mind them because I think it's down to like three or four types. Take it with a grain of salt because I want you to know that once they, you get your results, I want you to look at your top four mm -hmm. and then look at the core desire of each and see which one resonates with you because ultimately you're going to be the only person that can decide your Enneagram type. Um, but yeah, when you're taking it, be super honest with yourself and it's sometimes hard, but take off all the hats that you wear. If you're a mom, if you're a business owner, if you're a wife, you know, we, we wear all of these different hats. And sometimes when we're answering tests or taking quizzes, we answer them with shoulds, you know, we, oh, I should do this. Mm, you know, right. Oh, this is who I want to be. Right. So I'm going to answer yeah. it like this instead of answering it like honestly. Mm, so this yeah. This is who I am. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. Well, especially yeah. like some of the questions were kind of triggering because it's like, well, yeah. that's something that I don't like about myself. Why would I put it on? But mm. I'm like, okay, no, like you're doing a personality test. Stuff. You have to be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know even within the test, you're like, oh, that doesn't sound good. But yeah, I do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I can imagine. So if some of our listeners or viewers are going to take the test after this. And now they know about the types that could be very tempting to maybe manipulate 
how you're answering because you want a certain outcome from the yes. test results, which yep. a lot of different personality type tests can be that way too. Right. Um, yes. so it's interesting that, yeah, if you could just go look at them, look at the core desires, the fears and, mm-hmm. and be, I think honesty with yourself is that key through line that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I actually took a test just for fun. I wanted to see, um, what I would get. I, I know my type. I'm a solid three, <laughs> but I was like, Ooh, I want to take it. I want to see what I will um, get. And, and so I took it not thinking that I was taking it as a different number, but when it came back down to like the last couple questions, it was between an eight or a three for me. And I answered a few of them like an eight on purpose to see if it would give me an eight and yeah, give me an eight. I'm a three, but yeah, you can like manipulate the test to like get what you want. So the key is being honest, getting rid of the shoulds, taking off your hats and just doing some almost inner work Mm. to be honest with yourself. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that's so I know that you coach people using the Enneagram. Do you coach them to help them find their type or do you coach them based on their type? What does that look like? Yeah, both. Mm -hmm. So some people come into coaching and not knowing their type. And we talk about like, okay, so you're struggling with these things. Are you sure you're this type? I'm thinking you're a different type. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is, this, this happens pretty often actually. (laughs) And we actually did deeper we figure out they're a different type. And then once we figure out their true type, it explains so much more Mm -hmm. about what they're feeling, why they're doing things. So you can come into coaching, um, not knowing your type and we figure it out, or, you know, your type, and we just dig deeper into what does that look like in your life and how can you use the Enneagram to grow? Mm -hmm. Because the, the biggest thing in the Enneagram, well, the reason why I use it is for personal development you know, and growth, because as entrepreneurs, if we're not growing, you know, our business isn't growing and, you know, it's not going to (laughs) work. So the Enneagram is a great tool for you to recognize how you can grow as a person so that you can be the best you and run your business, have better relationships, you know, have a healthy relationship with yourself, everything like that. So it's a very awesome tool for growth. And the reason why it's a great tool for growth is because it, it shows you your strengths and it shows you your weaknesses. So not very many tests out there, you know, talk about the bad things about the Enneagram. And I love talking about the bad things. <laughs> it's just so bad, but it's a helpful tool because, you know, when you are, especially an entrepreneur, everything is changing Mm -hmm. and you have so many stressors in your life and you're in control of what's happening. And, you know, when everything changes, you have to be able to adapt. Mm -hmm. And when we are adapting, you know, our emotions kind of go all over the place for women. you know. (laughs) So as long as we can understand what we look like when we're in health, try to stay at a healthy peak state. Mm -hmm. And then when we dip into lower health levels, recognizing what we look like when we're disintegrating or unhealthy, we can pull ourselves back up quicker and go through that cycle as fast as we can, because we're always going to have the low points. It's just a part of life. Accept it and welcome them really, because it helps you grow, helps you get better. And then once you recognize, you know, go fast into growth after that. So it's a, it's an awesome tool for growth because it talks about your strengths and your weaknesses. Mm. Exactly. And it goes back to like the whole point of our podcast is self-care for entrepreneurs to actually do the hard work Mm -hmm. and feel why you're feeling those feelings. And it's so true that, I would, even when I've been doing the little bit of research that I have been doing to prep for this episode, I'm like, yeah, I really should do some, I, I know shadow work, but why aren't I answering these questions based on my personality? Mm-hmm. So I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it is. It's definitely helpful for that. Yeah. And I know that you guys um, talk about self-care and that's a main focus. Mm-hmm. And I think that is so important for entrepreneurs because, you know, we're in this like hustle culture. It's like, who mm-hmm. can work the hardest right now? And <laughs> the Enneagram is awesome because it also does tell you like how to actually care for yourself mm-hmm. because, you know, it, it talks about your growth and your disintegration. So for each type, I'll just kind of briefly overview like how to care for yourself based on your core desires. So like for one, I want you to intentionally recharge by yourself, which sometimes might be a little bit hard because you have so many hats that you're wearing and you need to get things done. So recharge by yourself and reflect on how far that you've come. So instead of thinking, this is who I want to be, I'm not that person already, I want you to ask and look at yourself and say like, wow, this is who I was and this is who I am now. I'm proud of myself for that. Kind of doing a reflection um, instead of just always looking the future and who you could be. For a two, the way that you could really care for yourself is doing something for yourself (laughs) because twos are just serving everyone all the time. I want you to, you know, take yourself on an elaborate date or go get your nails done or cook yourself your favorite meal, Mm. anything that's for yourself. And I want you to not feel guilty for it. (laughs) I imagine that's not easy. (laughs) No. Yeah. They're like, I shouldn't be doing this for myself. I should be doing this for, you know, my daughter. She loves getting her nails done. You know, whoever it might be, do it for yourself because that is one of the best ways that you can care for yourself. Because when we, when our own cups aren't full, like you can't pour from an empty cup, Yes, you know, so for the twos to recharge would be to care for yourself, you know, (laughs) for For a three, I want you to connect deep with somebody that you trust. And this is going to be very hard for you because you are so guarded with your emotions. Um, But ultimately threes want to be known and they want to be loved, but it's very hard for them to do that. So I want you to find someone that you completely trust and share with them something that you're scared that people might find out about you. Share with them you think I trust you? Yeah. What are you going to share with me? <laughs> share with me, Julianne. I like that actually, Stephanie, though, because I, um, I love like great conversations with people. Like mm-hmm. I've, I do like a good party and all that kind of stuff too, but like smaller groups, intimate settings where I can really connect with another being mm-hmm. really gives me a lot of energy. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I definitely can resonate with that. That's cool. Yeah. So go home tonight yeah. and spill your feelings. <laughs> feelings. <laughs> it's going to be really hard, but yeah. it is um, a, a good thing to practice as a three, mm. you know, opening yourself up and being authentic because sometimes threes feel like they need to be something to be loved to like mm. put on this show. So showing your authentic self will be a great way to care for yourself, Mm. you know, cool for four. I want you to remind yourself of the things that you're most proud of, because oftentimes you are thinking of who you want to be, who you want to be, but you're romanticizing, you know, your environment and things like that. And fours can have a pretty dark sense of humor and they can be very hard on themselves. Um, so I want you to remind yourself all the good things about you. What are you proud of and who, what do you love about yourself and share those things with somebody, write it down and remind yourself of the things that you really love about yourself and that you're really proud of for five. I would pinpoint, um, the skill that you feel most confident in and then practice that. And do it as much as you can because, um, you know, their core desire for five is to feel competent. Mm. And the way they feel the most confident is when they are doing a skill that they feel very capable in. So Mm. pinpoint the skill that you feel very capable in and do more of that. And you'll feel really good about yourself. (laughs) 
<laughs> Love it. For a six, I want you to trust your instincts. Um, it's also, it's, it's very hard for a six to, you know, trust their gut feeling. They almost feel like they need to think things through. They need to problem solve. They need to have everything in order before they make a decision. But I want you to just go off your and trust yourself today and don't rely on anyone else but yourself. And you're going to feel empowered, but it's also going to be very hard for you to do this at first. Um, but it's something that's so important to practice. <laughs> All I can think of though is like, I have too many gut feelings and I'm like, wait, how do I filter? <laughs> Which I one do I trust? These, all these <laughs> gut feelings. <laughs> oh shit. I got a lot to work through. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, then you could just talk to somebody about it. So sharing these things with them might help you do that. You're like, this is what I am feeling in my gut. And I think I should do this. Um, but you can just like ask, you know, Julie, like, what do you think is the best? Ready for and then I'll tell you all my feelings and it'll yeah. be great. Yeah. <laughs> we got it all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Do it. <laughs> for the seven, the best self-care that they can do is like get creative with the boring tasks in your life and have fun with your to-do list because oftentimes since they are sometimes scattered and like looking for the next best thing, they have a hard time getting down their to-do list and seeing what they started. So if you can make the things fun that you need to get done, it, you'll be more likely to do it. Um, so get creative, be fun, and um, stick to one thing at a time because you'll feel good about yourself when you complete a task. For an eight, I would say um, listen to your body and your emotions. Oftentimes eights just feel like they need to be so strong and physically and emotionally, they don't get vulnerable with anybody. So the way that you could care for yourself is really listen to your body, your own needs, and listen to your own emotions and find somebody that you trust and share your vulnerabilities with them because you can almost create a different version of strong showing who you are and being vulnerable. Mm. You read a Brené Brown book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There we go. <laughs> yes. And then for a nine, practice expressing your own thoughts. For nines, oftentimes they, you know, hold in their own opinions and their own thoughts in fear of creating conflict. So I want you to practice expressing your thoughts um, quickly and um, confidently without feeling like it'll create conflict because not all the time will it create conflict and conflict doesn't necessarily mean the relationship is ending and it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad but I want to give you a voice as a nine so be confident in expressing your opinions and expressing your thoughts quickly without feeling bad it's going to be hard but these are the things that we can practice to give you more confidence and yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are shaking your heads. I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, I'm it's like... funny. Cause even before, like we had a little thriving tides meeting before meeting up with you, Stephanie, mm -hmm. and uh, I had to tell Julianne some things and I'm just like, Ooh, I don't know. Like, I don't want her to get mad at me. Maybe I won't tell her and I'll just like bury it. <laughs> just take it down <laughs> but I'm just like no, no I'm, I'm sure she'll appreciate it yeah and yeah I think that's kind of funny because it's so true so yeah. I practice my self-care for today <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and the things that you could do is like practice these things every single day mm -hmm. all these self-care tips do not come easy to our Enneagram types mm -hmm. they are like probably the hard things to do but it's the way to take care of us the best and, you know, like I said before, we can't pour from an empty cup. If we're not taking care of ourselves first, we can't serve the people in our lives. We can't mm -hmm. be the best entrepreneur that we are if we don't take care of ourselves, if we're not aware of what's happening in our own lives. And that's what your guys' podcast is about. So I'm preaching to the choir right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you for reiterating what we've yes, been saying. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh so man, good. this is a this is so much to think about and I love it yeah. very very much and 
I'm curious to like, I know you were talking about like stances and like all these different things. So I'm sure we could sit here and talk to you for like 10 hours about it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we'll have you back again to go deeper at some point. Um, Episode part two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And three and four and five. And, you know, (laughs) also Stephanie, you have a podcast as well. Like I do. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) If um, if you want to know more about the Enneagram, which you should, because it's such a helpful tool as an entrepreneur. Um, I have a podcast called My Enneagram Life, and that is also my handle on We cover more in depth of what each type is. So right now we're going through the disintegration of each type and what you look like when you are unhealthy emotionally. And I give you tips on how to grow um, and how to use this information to apply it to your life. So it's not just like a dump of information. Yeah. I hope this yeah. wasn't a dump of and information. Her reels are really fun. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you like funny reels, go follow me on Instagram. Come say hi. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. I love it. But yeah, find me at my Enneagram life on mm. literally every platform. That's great. That's good. The, br- the brand nerd over here is like perfect. <laughs> um, and I want to ask you, Stephanie, as well, because we ask everyone who we bring on Thriving Tides, um, what does your self-care routine look like? And what yeah, does it that's mean for you? that's a great question. Self-care to me means, you know, taking care of your whole self. I think a lot of times people can say like, oh, self-care is doing something nice for yourself. But for me, it's feeding my body and my mind and my spirit and my emotions. It's, a, it's an entire thing. Mm-hmm. So I take care of myself by making sure that I'm active every single day. I take care of my body because the more you take care of, or the more, let me reword this. <laughs> <laughs> When we take care of our body, it shows us like how much we love ourselves. So mm-hmm. you might be pushing yourself really hard and it hurts so bad, but you love yourself enough to push yourself. Mm-hmm. So taking care of my body is a huge one. Taking care of my mind um, by filling it with good thoughts, um, always learning um, because I find time in my life when I feel the worst is when I've stopped learning. Mm -hmm. And I stop, you know, filling myself up with, you know, good things and ways that I can grow. So feeding my body, feeding my mind, and then also, you know, expressing my authentic self. And in the world of social media, I think it's so easy to not do that Mm -hmm. and just kind of put up a front. But in order for us to truly care for ourselves and love ourselves, we need to be ourselves. Mm-hmm. So showing my authentic self, trying to be like authentic with everyone, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a whole thing. It's not just a one thing. I hope that yeah. was a good answer. It's not, oh, it was, oh, it was a perfect answer because it was all about you. Exactly. And you're the only one who can tell us that, right? So <laughs> I definitely heard a lot of three coming through in it though. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, this sounds gently. You guys should hang out. You guys should have a separate okay. Zoom without me yeah. because you guys could we're the, the same, same person. person. <laughs> we may share a name, Stephanie, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is so funny. And that's the cool thing about like finding another type you like mm-hmm. automatically connect with them you're like yes. whoa we have the same brain wavelengths you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. look out world yeah. <laughs> totally totally I love it so cool <laughs> awesome um well sadly because we're both threes I feel like we could sit here and talk all night um <laughs> But we probably should say goodbye for now. And before we do that, I know you had a couple of things that you wanted to share with us and with our community, um, just so they know what you're up to and how they can connect with you. Yeah. So as I said before, the way, best way you can connect with me is probably through Instagram. Mm-hmm. I love Instagram. If you um, come and say hi to me, I will reply back to you. <laughs> um, so find me at my Enneagram life on Instagram. And I also have a work that will help you kind of um, find clarity in your life, create healthy habits, um, build your confidence, and it's designed for each Enneagram type. So it's going to 
specifically target growth tips for your Enneagram type. And then we'll go over like health levels and how to be the best you pretty much. So that is on Etsy. Um, and my handle Graham life on there too. Um, and then if you want to learn more about yourself personally, I also do coaching one-on-one um, to help you figure out what your Enneagram type is and how to use it in your life to become the best entrepreneur or friend or wife or mom or best this person. person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Love it. You know, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, come say hi to me. Excellent. Yeah. And I can confirm she will reply back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's how we got connected exactly. it was a couple days later but it's okay uh, it's okay that's you're life. you're a busy three we're also <laughs> yeah. um we are also three hour time difference too so that plays a yes. factor right yes. So yeah exactly yeah 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 Oh, well, this was amazing. Yes. Thank you really, so much. really appreciate your time, um, your knowledge and your energy. So thank you thank so much you. for being here with us. And uh, we look forward to staying connected. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Thank you so much for having me. I hope um, everyone in your audience, like totally learned so much and can take away, <laughs> um, you know, who they are in the Enneagram and how to implement it in their life, at least a, a little bit. But thanks again. Yeah. This was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, no. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, time to say goodbye. I'll say another episode is <laughs> done, everyone. Yeah. Thanks so much. Bye. 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 Thank you for joining us for this episode of Thriving Tides. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Follow us. Thriving Tides on Facebook, Instagram, and now YouTube to stay connected. And remember, don't fight the rip currents.